All right. Thank y'all for tuning in. Joining for Friday Night Live's Bible study. Um, Bishop, you want to press in? Yeah, yeah, we can. Father, we thank you for blessing us, oh God, one more time to assemble, oh God. We thank you that you blessed us, oh God, to be here, oh God, to study your word and to search the scriptures, oh God, that we might know we have eternal life. We pray that you bless each and every one that will listen, oh God, and each and every one that will participate. We pray, oh God, that you bless the teacher, oh God. Draw us all closer to you, O oh God. Give us more insight, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of your word. And we bind every contrary spirit right now that come to hinder your service, your work, even the reception and hearing of your word in Jesus' name and the teaching of your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Again, thank everybody for tuning in. Let's be sure to uh, like, share, and comment. Like, share, and comment on tonight. Tonight's Bible study is um, concerning the churches. Uh, I, I'm hearing a lot of word go forth with, with uh, the judgment of God, and it's starting at the house. And I'm definitely seeing that in his ministers and his prophets are speaking the same word that judgment has started in the house and trying to prepare God's people. So tonight, our root scripture is coming from uh, Revelations 1, verses 9 through 11. And if somebody... Okay, here I go. See y'all, my, my screen just doing the most. Um, that's Revelations chapter one, verse nine through 11. And it reads, I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Now the apostle John was exiled to the island of Patmos and the crime that he committed was being a follower of Christ. While in Patmos, John C was seized by the Holy Spirit and received prophetic visions from Christ, instructing him to write on a scroll what you see and send it to the seven churches. And this is what he did. So we're going to go to chapter 2, Revelations chapter 2. If you got your Bibles, get them out so that you can read along. I believe this. that's where we're at. So that's Revelations chapter 2. Oh, my God. Y'all bear with me. This this computer jumping my screen everywhere. Okay. Verse 10. I believe that's what I mean. No, uh, Revelations 1 and 10. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. What he's saying is, it starts with me and it ends with me. The church belongs to me. And what thou see is write in a book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, unto Smyrna, unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks with a garment down to the foot and gird about the paps with a gold girdle. His head and his hair were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were a flame of fire. And his feet like unto fine brass, and if they burned in a, as if they burned in a furnace. And his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars. 
and out of his mouth went a, a sharp sword, two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. And when I came to him, I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. And when I read that scripture, y'all, this popped in my head. You know, you hear people say all the time, you scared, you all, you scared me to death. You almost scared me to death. A lot of things that people say come from the word of God. Every time somebody was in the presence of the Lord or came into the presence of God, they fell on their face and they were so afraid unto death. I am he that liveth and was dead and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. He said, write on a scroll what you see and send it to seven churches. This is the way Christ designed it to work. If he has a word for the body or an individual, he may have personally sent a word to a leader or to you, a lay member, anybody, but you're not listening. You're not hearing or you're not obeying. Maybe you're confused because you veer from the past. So you're unable to hear. He will send a messenger. He gonna send a prophet. He gonna send a warning. He sends clear instructions on what needs to be done. It is up to you to listen. It's up to you to choose to do it or not. Doesn't matter if you never met them. Let's get that clear. You ain't have to. You ain't got to know who these people are. He he sends and chooses who he decides to send. So it may not be people that you know. They might be telling you the opposite of what those around you say. You have to try the spirit by the spirit. We should know those who labor among us. We should be using the gift of discerning of spirits to know if they come in the spirit of the Holy Ghost. If what we say lines up with the word of God, if what they come and give you lines up with the word, we should respond in obedience. We should respond with an action. Whatever it is that he is requiring of us, it's not about who brought the message. It's about is the message from God. And you respond to that message in your actions, in your choices. Most times the Lord already sent you the message. You've been dealing with the problem or something is going to come that will confirm it. At the end of the day, the word confirms itself. The advice in these letters is prophetic. It's a forewarning to us of the snares that can lure us away from our faith in Christ Jesus. And that is exactly what we are seeing today. The book of Revelation addresses seven letters to seven churches. Each letter proclaimed by Jesus. John gave the word, but the word came by Jesus. And it talks about what is good and what needs correction in the churches. And it warns them to repent. Same thing he doing with us. Hebrews 12 and 5. We're going to start at verse 5. I'll give you a little time. Look it up. Get your Bible out. Use your phone. Pull up your Bible app so that you can read along. You know, we're just not giving you our knowledge and our what we got to say. It's coming from the word. Hebrews 12 and 5. And Ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? You chasten your kids, don't you? So you got to expect the Lord to chasten his. But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. Furthermore, we have, we have had fathers of our own flesh, which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the father of spirits and, and live? Should we not be more so under the subjection of Christ? If you're going to do what your natural father tell you to do, you definitely should obey the, the, uh, the Holy Ghost. You definitely should obey the commandments of Christ. Now, these letters was written, written to these churches at, in this time, but it was a testimony for us. It was left as an example. We can most definitely line up our churches today 
next to the scripture and find out exactly what church we are assembling in. Because that's all you hear. A lot of people talking about it. Because people are coming out of the building. You, you can't fail to assemble yourself. You got to assemble yourself together. I, I hear you. So my question to you today is, you assemble, but in which church? So get your notepad out. Get your notepad out. Get your pen. And let's see what church we are assembling in. These churches and the state they were in can symbolize all churches in one way or another. The instruction given to them is crucial to us now. When you say something against what a person is doing or not doing, what is the first thing people say? Don't do what? Don't judge me. This is judgment. This judgment, y'all. Be judged now and correct it. You judge by the word of God, not by what you think or how you feel people ought to be doing it. Judgment comes from the word of God. This is what you lining it up by. So write down what you see that you do or don't do. I'm talking about let the word speak to you, not your neighbor, not what you see, your sister or brother. No, let the word speak to you so it can correct you. If you can't go to your leader with questions and concerns, there is your first red flag of the type of church that you are in. Now, the seven churches, the church of Ephesus, and I don't know if we're going to finish all of these, um, but we're we going to try. We're going to do one church, and then if anybody has anything you want to share, then chime in, and then we'll move to the next. The church of Ephesus. This was the church that has abandoned its first love. Okay? It's love for Christ and his teaching. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write these things, saith he, that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven candlesticks. Who is he? The one in whom all things exist. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man. This is who it is. Christ is in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks, walking from church to church, from congregation to congregation, from heart to heart. It's Christ. It's him coming and judging. He that keepeth Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. God has not given his church into the hands of men. Christ, the one who gave his life for the world, that all who believe in him may not perish but have everlasting life. He is the watchman of the house. The church does not belong to man. It belongs to Christ. And he is sending his messengers out with a warning. It's time to take heed to the word of God. He's walking in and out from church to church and heart to heart. Verse 2 says, I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not and hast found them liars and has borne and has patience, and for my name's sake, has labored, and has not fainted. He said, I see you, you keep pressing your way. Verse four, nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place except thou repent. But this thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. Ooh, the Nicolaitans, they do whatever you want to in the gospel. It's all acceptable. We, we're not going to talk too much on it, but I think I might do a study tomorrow, share the study of the Nicolaitans so you can know more of what that gospel is. But you can pretty much do what you want to. Everything, all, all everything is accepted in the gospel of the Nicolaitans. Like many of us today, the, Ephes the Ephesians believers were busy keeping themselves set apart from evil people, evil doings. They were identifying the false apostles while neglecting their first love. They forgotten why they do it. First Thessalonians 1 and 3, remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ, in the sight of God and our Father. You want to stay lined up in first works? 
We have to remember why we do the work in the first place. We must remain fervent and unconditional love for Christ. It is our love for him that gives us the heart to love others. It's your unconditional love for Christ that you can have unconditional love for the people. Most of us know how I feel when you first fall in love. You know how I feel. You all giddy. You excited. You, you want to do everything with that person and for that person. For no other reason than you love them. You have no agenda. It's just your love. They don't even have to ask you if you get a new job. Listen, we on time. We going above and beyond. You're excited about what you do. Same thing happens when you come to Christ. When we first come to Christ, we're looking for things to do. Opportunities to give and serve. Nobody has to ask us to do anything. We on time to the service, show up for Sunday school. We, we, want, we want all of Christ. We want everything that we can get that is of him. We dive in the word daily. We praying, we fasting. I mean, we on top of it when we start out. You doing everything you can. We unselfishly give ourselves away. But somewhere along the line, you have lost your first love. You've forgotten why you do it. The Ephesians stopped performing first works because they had lost their first love. So what exactly is first works? Good works. A sincere desire to serve Christ by serving people, not buildings, but the actual people, the church, with no thought about self-gain, what's in it for me? No, not for reward or recognition. You're not looking for a position and you ain't even looking for nobody to reciprocate the deed that you did. You're not looking for, for it in return from people. The Lord said what you do, you look to him. He's the one who's going to repay us. Deuteronomy 6 and 5 said, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. Matthew 22 and 37 says, Jesus said unto him, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. So that didn't change from the Old Testament to the New Testament. It still stood. This is what Christ said. This is the first and great commandment and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. You have got to keep your first love first in order to love anybody else. You cannot do it. And the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Jesus is saying this church has lost its love for people because it has lost its love for God. He gave his only begotten son for who? For us, for the people. It has become a job of service and no longer an act of love. The servitude is no longer in love. It's just a job. It's no longer your calling or purpose. You just do it as a job. Why? Because most people being paid to do it. Come on. Man is paying most pastors. Man is paying most prophets. So now it's not a calling. It's not what you've been chosen to do anymore. It has become a job. That's why the ushers treat people the way they do. You hear people say things all the time about how bad the ushers treat people and what they do when you come in and things like that. Why? Because they have lost their first love. They no longer have a love for God. So you can't have that love for his people. It's all about formalities. It's all about the program. And it's no longer about the people. You're doing the work, but without love. So take a moment and think about it. In the work that you're doing for Christ, how excited are you about it? How excited are you about doing the work? Is, is it a drag now to go to church? Oh, Lord, I got to go stand at these doors. That's the wrong attitude. It don't sound like love. What is your attitude toward the servitude? Have you become Lord over the position? It's your way or they can leave. I, I'm the leader of the usher board, and this is why I say you're going to sit. Have you become Lord over that position? Because if you have, it puts you in the spirit of trying to become Lord over people. This is the order. 
if if we're running things, when does the Holy Spirit get to come in and lead? If you're running it, when do the Holy Spirit get to come in? When is Christ invited yeah. into the atmosphere? Have you left your first love? The Lord had a similar case against his people in Jeremiah's day. Jeremiah chapter 2, write it down. Go read it for yourself. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, go and cry in the ears of Jerusalem, saying, thus said the Lord, the kindness of thy youth, the love of thine espousals, when thou wentest after me in the wilderness, in a land that was not sown. He said, y'all remember when you followed me anywhere? I led it without question, in true faith, just on my word you stood, no logic or no explanation needed. You just did what I asked you to. Your faithfulness and your loyalty was unfailing. The love you had for me as a bride, I saw it. Jesus told the Ephesian how to get it back. He said, you got to repent. If you found yourself in this church, you want to know how to get it back, how to get back to your first love, you must repent. Then he said, we must remember the things which we have lost. Oh, come on. The things we abandoned, the things we've neglected, and we got to go back to them. So the lesson in the letter of, of Ephesus teaches that truth and love must go hand in hand. A church that upholds the pure doctrine but have not love has nothing. If you don't have love, you have nothing. Instead, Jesus reveals that a church and his image must teach God's truth in love. How do we keep ourselves in that place? We must get back to spending time in God's presence worshiping, praying, hiding his word in our hearts. So when we go forth in our assignments and in servitude, we're doing it in love with no agenda. And, and I just want to say when we study, because the Lord gave me this and I received it for myself. See, this is what you got to do. You got to, when you get to studying, you, you studying for you. So when you study, don't study to teach. Sometimes we get caught right there. Don't study to teach, study to learn, to see yourself, study to apply the word to your own life, study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman needed not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Sometimes you can get caught up in the duty of your calling and forget to look at yourself first. Oh, I got to teach this lesson. And, and when the Lord gave it, and I want to share it. Hear the word for yourself. So when you get up and, and go forth, it's what the Lord is giving you for the people. You ask him that after you search yourself with the word. Now, right. Lord, what in this would you have me give to your people? You assemble, but in which church? Mm -hmm. Now, anybody want to share here on the church of Ephesus? Raise your hand and go ahead. Go forth in the Lord. Bishop, I know you ready. <laughs> Well, I'm writing, I'm writing down and everything. Uh I'm 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 in class. Uh one thing to say about the church of Ephesus, what you was talking about, is uh the the I wrote down fresh fire. You know, uh Paul said, though the outward man perish, the inner man is renewed day by day. Uh living for and then the scripture said, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. The old the the newness of Christ should never wear off. It should never get common. It should never get uh, just, you know, the average or normal. And then the fresh fire, the fire that we have in serving the Lord, if anything, it should get greater. It shouldn't get less. You should have fresh fire. I have I have just as much uh, enthusiasm and zeal today as I did when the Lord first saved me. And that's been about 47 years ago. But but I, I have I have more fire now than I did then. And I had a whole lot of it then. But you know, in other words, it should never get old. Your fire, your enthusiasm, and zeal to work for the Lord shouldn't get old. It should get greater. We just have more wisdom. And that and and I'm stop right there, but I'm I'm enjoying this lesson. That's good. That's good. Anybody else want to share right here? Um, 
Um, I just have one uh one little thing. Um, <clears throat> if you look at the Church of Ephesus uh in Acts that Paul talked to, he they wanted him to stay a little bit longer. You know, so many times you think about church today. Um, I, I remember Bishop speaking about um, he was in a church service and before the, the preacher could even get up to speak, the people were getting up and walking out. They did not come there to hear the word of God. They came there to, to I guess, to, for a form and a fashion. They came there to hear the singing. They came there to, you know, for what to show their newest outfit. But when when you when you have a love of Christ, when you have a love of Christ's words and you hunger for his words, um, that scripture that says as babes desiring the sincere milk of the word. And then when you are uh, of age to be able to eat meat, you know, you crave that Bishop was saying, you know, the uh, inward man uh, renews day by day. You're not re you're not ready to just get up and walk out. You 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 have that that uh, what we call it a uh, cake stage. You still want to be in a cake stage. We we as disciples of Christ should still want to be in that cupcake stage where you always want to be in the presence of and to do the things that we need to do to, to remain in the presence of the Lord. That's all I have. And man, I agree. I, I can remember sometimes being um, in services and people was ready to go, you know, uh, but the Lord was truly moving um, and it's like, well, something got to be wrong if too much of Christ is a problem. So I, I agree with that. Thank you for sharing, Sister Janina. Anybody else? I think that's that first of love you're talking about. So I'm going to go with on. Go ahead, Daddy. I was just reminded again of a, a church service I was in. I hadn't even thought about this when I had uh, uh, spoke. But I was in a church service and the Lord was moving. He His spirit was was just moving throughout the place. And I, I, this was my first time, I believe, at this uh at this church. And the Lord is moving. And the preacher, <laughs> he, he was so concerned about the offering. Well, come on, y'all. Let's go ahead and get this over with. This, what you mean? The spirit of the Lord is moving. You're ready to move out the way to get um the offering. So I'm just like, you know, and I've seen this in, not just in one church, in several churches. If your first love is money, you're not trying to trying to hear the, the word of God or feel the spirit of God. Your concern is getting that next uh, tithe or getting that next, um, you know, offering in and making sure the spirit of the Lord does not ruin your chance to, you know, get paid for the day. And that's that's happening in so many churches today. That's all I'm saying. Amen. Have you left your first love? If so, repent. What you need mm -hmm. to do is repent and come back to your first love. He said, do your first works. Come back to him. The second church, church number two, the church of Smyrna. And unto the angel of the church in Smyrna, right? These things said the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. And y'all, as I began to study, I began to notice something in the greeting. He said, these things said the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. Verse nine, he says, I know thy works in tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison that ye may be tried and ye shall have tribulation 10 days. Be thou faithful unto death and I will give thee a crown of life. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the spirit said unto the church. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. The church that remains faithful in the midst of persecution. Smyrna was being persecuted by those who said they knew God. Yet they were standing firm. It didn't cause them to leave Christ. And this is what's happening in a lot of in a, with a lot of people. They're coming across those that say they know God, but they do not know him. And it's causing them to leave not just the building, but they're leaving Christ. But the church of Smyrna, he said, y'all still standing. <laughs> they're standing firm. 
They're being slandered. The accusations is causing them to be persecuted. They're suffering. And Christ said, I know you don't look rich to the natural eye. You're not rich in material things, but thou art rich, rich in the spirit. What made them rich? Revelations 22, starting at verse 12. And behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. Verse 13 says, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. And that is how he begun speaking to the church of Smyrna. He said those words. He said these words that's coming to this church, these things said the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. So this is how we know that they are rich in spirit. He said, I'm Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life. This was the blessing. They have a right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. They were blessed. They were rich in spirit. And why were they rich in spirit? Because they did the commandments of Christ. You want to be blessed? You want to write to the tree of life? Do Christ's commandments. I know we say it all the time, but the Lord just got us right here. God said, this is my beloved son. Hear him. Blessed are they that do his commandments. That they may have a right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. Again, Matthew 23, verse 37. Jesus said unto him, hmm. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. If you do these two, you will fall in line with all of the rest. Smyrna was doing just this. The church of Smyrna, they did it. They followed the commandments. The first and the second and all the others fell in line. He acknowledges the wrong, the wrongful persecution that they was receiving. Christ warns them, some will be thrown in prison, urging them to remain faithful. Even to the point of death, he tells them, fear not, remain faithful. I have a crown of life for you. Mm -hmm. Thou art rich. I believe this book is uh, the Shira. The, the fourth chapter, and the angel that talked with me came again, awaked me as a man that is waking out of his sleep, and said unto me, what seest thou? And I said, I have looked, and behold, a candlestick, all of gold, with the bowl upon the top of it, and it has seven lamps thereon, and seven pipes to the seven lamps, which are upon the top thereof. For who has despised the day of small beginnings? Mm -hmm. And when the Lord gave me this, I really didn't know what it was for. And then I, I, I began to study the chapter and go into these books. This church was a small church. They didn't have much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, come on. They're the kind of church people talk about on today. That church in that hole in the wall church. Come on. <laughs> the, the one that got five or ten members. Oh, but it's powerful in that little house. Come on, somebody. I mean, if we're going to be honest, it's a whole lot of churches that started off in a hole in the wall that had way more power than these churches got today. We're just yep. going to be honest. Yep. Oh, come on. So yep. for, for who had despised the day of small things? For they shall rejoice and shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel with those seven. They are the eyes of the Lord, which run to and fro through the whole earth. He sees you. Don't despise your small beginnings. Like the church of Smyrna, we all suffer persecution in one way or another, but not yet unto death. But if we have it, not unto death, yeah, we trying to die spiritually to ourselves so that Christ can live through us, but your life has not been threatened. Ain't nobody threatening to shoot you or kill you or beat you or none of that. 
for professing Christ. That hasn't happened. But if and when it comes, you got to remain faithful. Mm -hmm. When even right now, what we think is so big is people not accepting us because we preach Christ. Oh, come on. This ain't nothing. Mm -hmm. This ain't nothing. You got to remain faithful. Everybody not going to agree with you. Everybody not going to line up. We already know that. Wide is the way. Oh, but it leads to destruction. We know that already. So everybody not going to follow. Romans 8 and 18. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. You assemble, but in which church? Mm -hmm. Sister Janita, I see you got your hand up. Oh, um, I had, <laughs> I had Matthew seven and um <clears throat> thirteen where you said, uh, broad is the way, and many there be that find, uh, many there be which go in there. when you got a large, uh, overwhelming mega church, you know, um, broad is the way that leads to destruction. But when you have a, I was uh literally thinking about that when you had said it, a hole in the wall, you know, when you was out there in the world. Most people wouldn't go to the uppity, uh, upscale uh, place because you had to pay to get in. It was you would go, you would go to the hole in the wall, and that's and that's even more so in the church of of, of the Lord. You want to go where the power is. It's not a, a manufactured power or a man made power. It's the power of the Lord that's normally in the small congregations. Um, also, I had got um, John sixteen and one. Um, and these are the words of Jesus. When you talk about um, they persecuted the people of God, they persecuted uh, those that had the testimony of Jesus Christ. And uh, Stephen comes to mind at this moment. Um, but John 16 and 1, this is Jesus speaking. He said, these things I have spoken unto you that ye should not be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the Come time on. cometh that whosoever killeth you will think they do it God's service. And these things will they do unto you because they have not known the Father nor me. But these things I have told you that when the time shall come, ye may remember I told you of them. And these things I said not unto you at the beginning because I was with you. But I go, but now I go my way to him that sent me. And none of you ask me whether I whether uh ask me whether goest thou. So basically, Jesus is telling us, he tell he told us in John that they gonna they're gonna if you are a part of the body of Christ, for men that live godly shall suffer persecution. If you're not receiving any persecution, if you got everything going the way you want it to be going, if everything you ain't going through no trials, you ain't going through no tribulations, woe unto you. Because the enemy might have you right where he wants you. He ain't gonna give you no trials because he got you where he wants you. But when you are in a in, in a battle or in a tribulation, you you know that you know that's 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 if you live godly, you're gonna suffer persecution. And he, Jesus already told us in John that we was gonna suffer. So when we get put out of churches and when we um you know they say oh you a false pro you are, you a false prophet or you a false this or you a false that what does the word of God say? Do we believe what the word of God says? That's all I have. Oh, uh, when you was talking uh about being faithful you know jesus said about the sea the sea that fell among rocks he said it it fell and because it didn't have any earth it immediately came up but when the sun came out it it, it withered and that was a type of he said in another scripture when tribulation arise then by and by because of the word they are offended and they perish uh anybody can be faithful in blessings. That's no problem. Anybody can be faithful to the Lord as long as He's blessing you. You know, all the, the, the blessings are overflowing. I'm gonna be faithful. But the true mark of maturity is if you're faithful in tribulation. That's the faith. That's the true mark of spiritual maturity. Is can you be faithful in tribulation? You know, Jesus said, "He that is faithful." And that which is least is faithful in much. Anybody can is, is inspired to get a message when you're going to preach to hundreds and thousands. 
do you have that same inspiration when you preach it to one or two? It should be the same because we're not working for men, we're working for the Lord. You know, in that scripture you talk about despise not the day of small things. And Jesus even said, if you're not faithful in that which is another man's, who will give you that which is your own? We show our faithfulness to God, not when he blesses us. Man. But when we're going through, when when you can you still preach to others about God will make a way when your way is not made? Can uh -huh. you can you preach to others that God will keep you when you're being fought on every side? Or do you put a uh out the lunch sign <laughs> when you're going through, you know, <laughs> uh, uh close down business? When you going through and then when the sun come back out, see, this is this is really the mark of maturity. Can you, you know, G, the, uh, John and James' mother uh, came to Jesus. You know, I want my son to sit on your left hand and on your right hand. And Jesus asked them, can you drink from the cup that I drink from? Can you be baptized with the baptism that I'm baptized with? They didn't understand. John was put on the Isle of Patmos. If we're talking about him today, James had his head cut off. Come on. So, so you, so you got to understand that this is not. And, and the scripture says that what it says, uh, what is that first Peter four and one? For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourself likewise with the same mind. You got to prepare yourself. That's why Jesus constantly talked about his death. Not only was he reminding his disciples, he was mentally, spiritually preparing himself. Mm -hmm. And even after that, the Bible says when he prayed in the garden against Cinnamon uh, and prayed the Lord <laughs> angels came and ministered to him. So we got to be faithful, y'all. We got to be faithful, mm -hmm. not just when the sun shines, not just when they saying amen. You know, you know, it's, it's so easy to get caught up on the praises of men. We all want to be complimented. We all love to be liked. We all love to be received. But that's just really not the case all the time when you really serve in the Lord. Jesus even said, woe unto you when all men of men speak well of you. I don't want some, some people, I don't want you to tell me, amen. Jesus, he received his persecution from the religious. They call him a bastard child. They said he cast out devil by Beelzebub. So we're not greater than him. The servant can't be greater than his master. They're going to call you. I take it as a badge of honor. Uh, they gonna call you a, a deceiver, backslid, mm -hmm. false prophet, and this is not the people in the world gonna call you this. <laughs> this is the people that's supposed to know the Lord. That's right. You have to understand and all myself likewise. I mean, hold on, I'm really enjoying this message. I hope everybody's receiving it because all of this is prophetic. All of this Amen. is prophetic to the disciple. You know, he told me he said the world gonna hate you. If they hated me, they gonna hate you. So, you know, we have to realign our under, our expectations. When you are mm -hmm. expecting to be received, then when you're rejected, it hurts. But when you understand the consequences, counting up the cost, mm -hmm. then when you're hurt, you're rejected, it don't hurt you as much. I mean, you want people to receive you, but if they didn't accept Christ, then they're not going to accept you. And a lot of those that didn't accept Christ, as I said, were not those that were in the world. They were those that were claimed to be the people of God. Amen. I um, When we're talking about uh, John and him, we're talking about being on the island of Patmos and we're talking about the things that they go through. I'm thinking of uh, where he was placed, uh -huh. why he was placed there. Come on. And the message that he received while he was there. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that is how we got what we're reading today. He was he was sent out there as a sentence, a prison sentence. Right. For being a follower of Christ. He had to suffer that in order to come back with this word that we are reading today. Right. And I'm reminded of a, a time, you know, I done cleaned up my life. I'm I'm on the right track. I was bringing my kids to school and I got pulled over. And I said, I know I wasn't speeding because I drive this street every day. I know that the police station is on the corner. I know it's a stop sign. There's nowhere in the world I was speeding. But I got pulled over and he told me I had a warrant. The warrant was from like 2003, 2010. I mean, years ago, I'm like, ain't no way in the world 
I got a ticket from that far back. I didn't understand it at the time. But when I got down to the police station, as I was sitting there waiting on them to pay the ticket so I could get out, a young lady came in and sat down next to me. I'm talking about what the Lord does when he chooses you. It ain't no easy thing. I did not have to go. It didn't happen for the ticket. It happened for her soul. Mm -hmm. The young mm -hmm. lady began to tell me how she was tired of living. She was tired of life and how she wanted to give up, how she wanted to commit suicide. And there I was sitting thinking about a ticket. You understand? But it pulled me up out of that as I began to minister her. And when she got out, she kept in touch. You know, and she wanted to know more about the Lord. But that had to happen. I didn't know it at the time. The lesson was learned after the fact. So a lot of things we're going to go through, the lesson is on the end of you passing the test. And then exactly you know what the lesson was for. Then mm -hmm. you understand why you had to go through it. And the next time you come to that crossroad, you should have a better understanding of why you in something or why you're going into it. Come on, Sister Janita. Oh, um, that was good. Um, I was just reminded of Matthew 5 and 11 when Jesus uh, gave us the be attitude. And this is uh, when you say taking the word and apply it to your own life. This was just really a blessing to me uh, reading it over. He said, blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven for so persecuted they, the prophets, which were before you. So when we suffer persecution, Jesus kept telling us, don't be sad. Rejoice when men shall revile you for my sake. They'll see that you they'll see who you are in Christ and how you are in Christ. And they will seek to, to persecute you just because of who you are. You know, how we respond in that persecution is very, very important. And I was reminded of Matthew, uh, not Matthew, Romans 5 and uh, 3, when Paul said, not only so, but we glory in tribulation also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience. Who help me with that one, Lord? And patient experience <laughs> and experience hope. And hope make it not a shame because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. But when we were yet without strength in due time, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. So our time is not his time. Our thoughts are not his thoughts. Our ways are not his ways. So far as the heaven is above the earth or God's ways and thoughts in time from ours so we have to just man just suffer through it That's and right. do it with the with the with the uh, uh i guess an uh, open heart and uh understanding heart that his it's, it's his time that we're going through it it's his process it's not our process we don't process ourselves and i'm talking to myself right now we don't process ourselves we have to be willing again like bishop said to count up the cost what you what you are when you are chosen in Christ, not just called, but when you are chosen in Christ, the process. I mean, man, sometimes you just don't understand why. Well, Lord, why? You know what? You know, I it don't matter, Lord. Whatever, whatever it is, like Jesus said, I'm, I'm gonna be like Jesus. Let Thy will be done, not my will, because I don't know nothing. I'm just dirt. So let Your will be done, so that You can be glorified. That's all I had. Amen. We're talking about the Church of Smyrna. So if you find yourself in that place where you feeling left out, you might not have the material things you see all these other uh, people of God having and things of that nature, whatever it look like, stay faithful to God. Continue to stand on his word and know that you are his and that he sees you. Uh, number three, the church of Pergamum. Can I, can I say this in safe? Uh-huh, go ahead, Bishop. Uh this is one of the problems of the prosperity gospel mm -hmm. is that it has taught the saints to be timid. It's, it's, it's taught the saints to our expectation is different. Mm -hmm. We know Jesus suffering. We celebrate his, his, his death and resurrection on Easter, <laughs> but, but the rest of the year, we looking to prosper. We, we looking to be blessed. And when we don't get that, then, 
we're at a loss, you know. Uh, uh, since Janice said something about the prophets, uh, the scripture that said the prophets, uh, Jeremiah was thrown in, in the dungeon so much he said, I ain't gonna make no mention of this man's name no more. <laughs> and, and, and he and he refused to prophesy. That's when we got that. He said, oh. But his word was in me like fire shut up in my bones, and I was weary with Ooh. forbearance. I couldn't stay. Elijah was threatened, mm -hmm. and it wasn't an idle threat. This man left, dropped his servant off, and was in the wilderness on a juniper tree praying for the Lord to kill him. He didn't want to die because all he had to do was stay where he was because Jezebel had already told him, oh, by this time tomorrow, yeah. you're going to be dead. Mm -hmm. uh, but these were men of like passion. I think history mm -hmm. tells us that Isaiah was sawed in, in, in two in a hollow log. They took they took this preacher and put him in a hollow log and sawed the log in two. And then you look at what we are what we are today. John, John was placed on an island by himself. Question: What did he eat? What did he? What kind of wild animals were out there? What? How did he sleep? Was he was was he warm? Did he have a, a bed? Did nobody isolation? Uh, a solitude. Like, like I've heard about people going to prison and being put in solitude. And they lose. They go crazy. But they out there by themselves. Yeah. They, they can't talk to nobody. And they throw. They they, they eat. I guess they feed them through through a, a tray under the door. With a, well, this man didn't even have a tray under the door. Mm -hmm. And we find him praying in the spirit on the Lord. They Paul and Silas. They were in the prison after being beat. And at midnight they sung and praised God. Our response in persecution is the mark of true maturity in Christ. I'm through. Go ahead on though. And that that church, this persecution, those going through, were the ones that Jesus said were blessed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was those who suffered with him that he said were blessed and will reign with him. The church number three, the church of Pergamum, mm -hmm. the church that compromises its beliefs. And to the angel of the church in Pergamos, write these things, said he which had the sharp sword with two edges. I know thy works and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seed is. And thou holdest fast my name and hast not denied my faith, even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful mortal, who was slain among you, where Satan dwelleth. But I have a few things against thee. Because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, which tell you he didn't know how to. Balaam taught him how to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed unto idols and to commit fornication. So hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate, you're allowing them to come in and do whatever they please. Repent, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and I will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. Now, Balaam tried to unsuccessfully, unsuc he wasn't successful, he tried to proph uh, prophesy against the people of Israel. And write it down, that's Numbers chapter 22. I'm just going to give you a couple of verses, but go back and study, y'all. And read the word for yourself. Numbers 22 and 7. And the elders of Moab and the elders of Midian departed with rewards of divination in their hand. And they came unto Balaam and spake unto him the words of Balak and said unto them, Lodge, he, and he said unto them, Lodge here this night, and I will bring you word again as the Lord shall speak unto me. Now, the king had saw that the, the people of God were, were mighty and they were growing and, and he wanted them to be cursed. So he sent money. He sent rewards of divination in these people's hand to pay him to prophesy against uh, Israel. And he said unto them, lodge here this night and I will bring you word again as the Lord shall speak unto me. So they paid the prophet. Oh, come on, stay with me. And the prince of Moab abode with Balaam. They paid him for a prophecy. Oh, y'all don't want to hear this, but he blessed me. They paid him for a word. My God. 
They paid him. Second Peter 2 and 15, which have forsaken the right way. He said, I got an all against you. These people you're dealing with have forsaken the right way and are gone astray following the way of Balaam, the son of Bazaar, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. Immodesty, indecency, they vulgar, vile, ungodly, wrong, sinful, blasphemous, immoral. It don't matter, but they pay. Oh, come on. With rewards of divination in their hand, they will pay you to come and give them a word and they can still live in their sin. Oh, come on, somebody. <laughs> Numbers 31 and 16. Behold, these caused the children of Israel through the counsel of Balaam to commit trespass against the Lord in the matter of Peor. And there was a plague among the congregation of the Lord. And you wonder why everybody in your house is sick. You wonder why everybody in the church is sick or dying or falling dead. Come on. Baal Peor. Uh, was like a local deity. It was worshipped by the Moabites. When the Israelites following Moses to the promised land were in the vicinity of this place, some of them fell into idolatry and they worshiped Baal. This is what he is telling the church. This is what he is telling the church of Pergamum. This is what you're doing. This is where you at. I'm telling you, get your pen and paper out. You write it down and, you, and find out what church you are assembling in. My God. As a result, they uh as a result of their sin, the men of Israel were judged by God. A lot of this ain't Satan. This is God's judgment. Oh, come on, you gotta know the difference, y'all. I find myself in situations, and you know what I do? I put myself under the light. Let me see if, if I'm lined up with the word. Then I know if it's the judgment of God. I know if I'm being chastised. Come on. I know if, it, if I'm being tried, if it's tribulation, if it's just suffering, if it's something that I just got to go through. But a lot of things people are going through are not Satan. That ain't right. no tribulation and trial. That's the judgment of God. Right. Oh, just repent. The story of Abel has started with Balak, the king of the Moabites. Now he hired Balaam. I'm talking about a prophet for hire. Did you hear what I said? They said he sent money. This is a prophet for hire to curse Israel. A lot of y'all are prophets for hire. Y'all got hired to prophesy. And the angel of the church has hired you. That church you went into? Come on, somebody. They Come on. hired you. You are hiring. You are going out and hiring prophets. Oh, hallelujah. You are hiring them to come in and tell you what you want to hear. You're hiring them to come in and speak against some of the people that's in your church. Because they're a true prophet. Oh, come mm. on, somebody. So you hire one to come in and say the opposite. So that the mm -hmm. people in your church can believe them over the prophet that was sent by God. Mm. Oh, come on, somebody. My God. Listen. Prophets for hire. The angel of the church. This is who these letters went to. These went to the, the pastors, the apostles, the ministers of these churches that have a duty to do with the word of God in these positions that are supposed to be leading the men and women of God. But mm -hmm. you are there hiring prophets to come. Mm -hmm. Ooh, hallelujah. Okay, you ain't hiring, but you let the first lady hire. The elect lady hiring. Oh, come on. Judgment has started at the house. Balak has seen the, the progress and the might of Israel, and he was trying to do something that was going to stop him. He mm -hmm. didn't want to be overtaken by them, and Balaam took the money. Oh, hallelujah. He took the money, but was unable to curse Israel. He didn't say he gave it back either. <laughs> he took the money. Because, and he couldn't do anything because the Lord would not allow him to do so. Balaam then met with the king of Moab and went through the motions of receiving a word from God. Not once, but seven times. He kept going back. 
So what that tell you? They kept paying him. Just like y'all doing. Y'all keep paying these prophets to come in there and give you a word. Oh my God, help somebody on today. Hallelujah. Each time he ended up blessing Israel instead of cursing Israel. They kept getting the blessing and the king got mad. I told you to curse them and you blessing them. <laughs> the Lord said, this is what you're doing. You trying to curse my people. Oh my God. By the end of the seven tribe, Balaam finally got the message that Balaam would not curse Israel for him. He couldn't. If he went, that tell me that he would have if he could have. But he couldn't. In Numbers 25, write it down. We find that the women of Midian began to seduce the men of Israel. They began wow. to commit sexual sin and to sacrifice their God to their gods. Oh, hallelujah. Have you been seduced by the women? It's men out here seducing too. Some in the in the household of God have been seduced. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Since the gods of the pagans were often fertility gods, that's how they worship. It was often involved in sexual acts. He mm. might not have gotten you to commit the sexual act yet, but he got you doing the talk. Yeah, he got you laughing at them nasty jokes. He got you talking on the people's clothes. It's not too long before you're going to commit the act. Mm -hmm. it's, I can't get them to do it all at once, but I'm, I'm going to lead them up to it. Oh, come on. You got to see the enemy. The incident is recorded in Numbers 25. Go read it. While Israel was standing, shit, the men began to indulge in sexual immorality. We have... Y'all, every time you turn around, it's a scandal about a pastor cheating on his wife. Y'all, this is the word right here. It's telling you what's happening. Mm -hmm. It's telling you who you're sitting under. It's telling you the things that are happening in the body of Christ. We ain't talking about the world. We're talking about in the church. Judgment has started in the house. And we just started bringing people into this toxicity that we have going on in the body. We got to clean this up. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is what the word came for, y'all. It's in love. It's in love. We got to tear down when you want to you wanna see something new. You want to do something new in your house. What you got? You got to tear them cabinets off to put new cabinets up. You got to tear this stuff down. It needs to be rebuilt. The foundation is broken or it's completely gone. And the house is sinking or has already sunk. Mm. Oh, hallelujah. The people ate the sacrificial meal and bowed down before these gods. So Israel yoked themselves to Baal. Mm. They yoked themselves. This is what you have done. You got to cast this stuff down. You It's some things on you you got to denounce. Mm -hmm. It's some stuff you come into covenant with because you agreed to it. Mm -hmm. Y'all, it's simple. You done came into covenant with something you agreed to because you agreed to it. He said, my people pass for lack of knowledge. You don't even know what you agreed to. Mm -hmm. You Come don't on. even know you in a covenant. Come with on. Satan. You don't even know it. You don't even know you under the spirit of Jezebel because you come into this covenant. You don't even have the knowledge of what's going on. You wonder why you confused. You wonder why you ain't got no understanding. You wonder why things are going the way they are in your life. The not that. Lord, I don't know what I've done. Repent. Lord, fill me with the Holy Ghost. Show me. Lead me. My God. Come on, Sister Janine. I see you got your hand up. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, that's good. Um, I was reminded, um, you know, when you said uh that the that we got prophets for hire. So many times Christ uh, told us, you know, beware, beware of men, beware of false prophets, beware. Um, and he gave us examples in the, in the Old Testament. Uh, my, my mind went to 1 Kings uh, 22, when Jehoshaphat uh, and the king of Israel was wanting to go up to Ramoth Gilead. And I'm just going to read a little portion. This is in 1 Kings 22, and I'm going to read 12. 22 and 18 through uh, 23. And it'll just give you exactly what happens 
when you have a, 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 a true prophet and you have a false prophet. Um, and this again is first Kings 22 and 18. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, did I not, did I not tell thee that, that he would prophesy no good concerning me, but evil? And he said, hear thou therefore the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne and all the host of heaven standing by him on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one said to another, once and one said on this manner and another said on that manner. And there came forth a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. And the Lord said unto him, wherewith he shall, be. he said, I will go forth and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, thou shalt persuade him and prevail also. Go forth and do so. This is 23. Now, therefore, behold, the Lord had put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these prophets. And the Lord had spoken evil concerning thee. So when you are not, when you got a prophet of the Lord and you got a prophet of man, most times the prophet of a man going to say, oh, you're going to get $5,000 next week. Oh, you're going to get a business this week. You're going to, they're prophesying falsely to you lies. But all these things that were prosper in this world, whereas uh, a true prophet of the Lord hardly ever has anything good, according to the ears, a natural ears of man, if you're not trying to correct yourself uh, to get done, it's going to, he's going to tell you the truth. And it's up to you to use the spirit of discernment to whether you, you're being prophesied lied to by the spirit of divination, or you're being told, you know, prophesied to by the spirit of the Lord. But, you know, you have to be, just be mindful. That's all I had. I'm sorry. And man, I noticed that, uh, especially in this day and time, a lot of people are being prophesied to because it's the people they know. They they trust the word of the people they know over the word of God because it didn't come from somebody they knew. Or the, the, the person that they knew say, nah, what they said ain't God. That ain't true. But I'm telling you, this is of the Lord. Or they may have been uh, in a position longer. They may have been saved longer. You're looking at the wrong thing. You got to line up the word that came forth with the word of God. And if you got the Holy Spirit in you, you got to trust it and allow him to lead you. That's good, uh, Sister Janita. So these people, anybody want to? Okay, so these people had yoked themselves up to Baal and the Lord's anger burned against them. As a judgment against Israel's sin, God sent a plague among the people. According to Numbers 31 and 16, the women did this on the advice of Balaam. So now, as, as shepherds of these houses, you are bringing in people that are seducing and leading God's people astray. And it was taught, it was on the advice of Balaam. You, you you talking the way you're talking, you you speaking the way you're speaking, your attitude. I, come on, I heard a so-called preacher say he is not telling grown people they can't have sex and not be married. He said, I ain't telling them they can't do that. But 1 Corinthians 10 and 8 says, neither let us commit fornication. And some of them committed and fell in one day. Three and 20,000. Whose advice are you under? You assembly, but in what church? Jesus said, I have a few things against you. This was a pastor. He said, I'm not going to tell these grown men and women that they can't go out and, and commit fornication. Come on. This is in the house of God. Balaam's way is a choice to promote lies over truth for financial gain. We are just going to overlook it to get this money. And that is what a lot of shepherds in, in, the, in the body of Christ are doing. We're going to overlook it because we need these tithes. We done built this million-dollar elephant, and we got to keep this light bill paid. And they pay their tithes. Oh, we're going to pray for them. Everybody, you know, our brother fell. Y'all pray for him, but he's going to keep preaching. My God, I, I heard um a few weeks ago I got a phone call. Now, I already had knew what had happened. Uh, but, uh. Pastor, I'm talking about these people over over a house shepherding had fallen. They was on top of the church smoking crack. 
the pastor of the church. This is Come what on they're now. doing. Come on. I'm telling y'all, it's bad up here. And what did the overseer do? Brought him in, had everybody pray. You know, we're going to pray for him, put him right back in position. God sees all. Oh, my God, you got to answer. Judgment has come to the house of God. Mm. When you can climb on top of the church house and smoke your pipe, something is going up. Come on. I'm looking at everybody. Who, who put you in position? Who left you in position? And who is still in this church? You assembling, but what church are you assembling in? Come on with Ooh, it. Listen, he said, let every man be persuaded in his own mind. You got to decide, come on. The Lord be speaking. He be telling you when to come out. A lot of times you done got comfortable in that toxic situation like yep. we do in relationships and you don't want to come out because you're comfortable. Mm -hmm. You're going to miss Christ sitting up under some of this stuff. Oh, hallelujah. You better pay attention to what is going on. You're assembling, but in what church are you mm -hmm. assembling in? According to Jude 1 and 11, Balaam's error was his willingness to accommodate pagan beliefs out of greed. It was for the money. You cannot serve God and mammon. It's one or the other. And mm -hmm. this is what is happening. It's the money that is drawing people out of the will of God. Because they want that money. Mm -hmm. I had somebody tell me uh, one time, well, you know, they gonna come, you know, and you'll be, you know, people be paying you. Ain't nobody about to pay me. To preach the word, I know, I know you. You can't say it won't happen to you, but I said it won't happen to me. Ain't nobody praying, ain't nobody paying me to preach the word. You ain't speaking that on me, no, because I know the way. Mm -hmm. That's not it. I'm not gonna be a prophet for hire. My God. So that was it. Was out of greed. Jude one and four also refers to the sin of those who pervert the grace of our God into a license for immorality. One trait of false teachers in the church is that they attempt to turn our liberty into freedom to do whatever you want to. No, we ain't got liberty to just be out here doing whatever we want to. It is the belief that one can be fully cooperative with the world. I can do everything they're doing in the world and agree to it and serve God. You can't do both. That mm -hmm. is a lie. You have got to pick a sign. The doctrine of Balaam teaches compromise wanting disciples to forget they are called to be separate and holy. Nowadays, you can't tell us apart. And no. I'm talking about from the inside out. Because you just as nasty. I, I seen a, a YouTube video say the cussing prophet. I had a sister tell me she was in the service and the prophet was cussing. Saying, you know, I got to say it like this to get y'all to understand. So y'all are listening. And you ain't finna cuss me out in, in the in the prophecy. Come on. Y'all, this is happening. Come on. This Come is on happening with. in the house of God. You might hear me slip up and say something. I was in the service and the preacher said that. I might slip up and say something. I got my purse. And, I, and you might slip up and say it, but I ain't gonna hear it. I'm just not sitting under that. Mm -hmm. Come on. I've heard a preacher say it ain't the church's job to take care of the poor. Ain't the church's job to pay your, I got my purse. I mean, they might listen, but I'm not. That is not the word of God. Come on. You got to stand for something or you going to fall for anything. You understand me? You got to pick a side. You got to be strong enough to stand up and say, I don't care what y'all talking about. This is not Christ. Come on. He is not here. And I'm not sitting under it. Come on. Ooh, sometimes people need to hear that. You may be that one person that will tell them, okay, I'm not because Christ's not here. And it might open the door where they will repent, where they will see what's mm -hmm. going on in the house. Mm -hmm. Come on. Man, everybody leaving? Everybody gone? You asking what's, oh, I'll come on, somebody. I ain't coming because Christ ain't there. Just let it be what it is. Let the courts fall where they fall. If I, but I'm taking a chance if I don't say it. I'm taking a chance on not giving you the opportunity to repent. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Call an ace a ace and a spade a spade. This is what it is. Come on, Sister Janita. 
Uh, I was reminded of Titus uh, 1 and 11. And it says, oh, come on, computer. You would. I'm sorry. My computer decided to go to a commercial. You you can't even tell us apart now. And I'm talking about from the inside out. What's mm -hmm. on the inside of you? Because people are saying, and we, but you got to keep it in the context that it's mm -hmm. supposed to be in. Don't be judging people, you know, about it, how they look or what they got going on. Them people ain't saved yet. So they dressing how they supposed to dress. They living how they supposed to live. But when mm -hmm. you come over in here and you get saved and you get filled with the Holy Ghost, what's on the inside should show up on the outside. Amen. It should Amen. show up in your dress. It come should on. show up in your attitude. It should show up in your response and your actions. There's mm -hmm. nowhere in the world you've been saved 15 years and you still wearing mini skirts and sitting on the front row. I'm sorry. You're just not doing it. <laughs> I mean, I'm look, be honest, you're not doing it. The Holy Spirit is not allowing you to operate like that. You're not still going around with a nasty attitude and you've been saved for 10 years. You're not doing it. The Holy Spirit is not going to allow you to operate like that. Mm-hmm. It doesn't happen. So, yes, what's on the inside going to show up on the outside. There should be a difference. It shouldn't just be a difference in your heart because what's in your heart does what? It comes out. Oh, it's going to come out in what you say. It's going to come out in what you will. What's in your heart going to come out. That's right. Go ahead on. So a change should take place. Come on with it. Uh, you, I don't want to look like the woman on Second Street. Oh, come on. I, I don't want to be dressed like Nicki Minaj. Come on. My hair not going to be pink. It's just not. I'm not going to look like a rock star. Oh, uh, y'all don't want to talk about it. It's the truth. Come on. Come on. Come on. Wait on. Wait on. Oh, you ready? What you say? Yeah, go ahead. Um, it was it's Titus 1 and 11, and it says, Who whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things with they which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. That's Titus 1 and 11, where Paul was talking to uh to the mm -hmm. church or in Titus saying, you know, they teaching things that they ought not teach. They are, they saying things that they ought not say. Um, you know, where we have first pastors, uh, you know, it, it's just stuff going on for, that people are doing for filthy lucre's sake. And lucre is money. Lucre is money. They're doing whatever they want to do. Um, <laughs> okay, Lord. Um, you think about, um, uh, wow, a church for all people. Uh, I mean, if you're, you're a church for all people that you, you, you gonna make sure you get all the money, uh, or, or. I, I I don't know. Are you a church of Christ, or are you a church for all people? I I, I don't know, but you got it. Amen. It appears that since he could not curse Israel, he found another way to fulfill the wishes of Balak, who was paying him. <clears throat> Excuse me. Balaam knew. That if the Israelite men could be uh, seduced into idol worship, see if Satan can't get you one way, he's gonna try to figure it out another way. Come on. If if he if he could get the men seduced into idol worship, that God Himself would curse them, that His His wrath would fall on them. But He had to He has to find a way to get you to do it. Mm -hmm. He can't do nothing that the Lord does not allow. Mm -hmm. Unless he can get you to step out the wheel of God. Oh, hallelujah. Unless he can get you to step out the wheel. Unless he can get you to doubt what the Lord has said. That's what happened in the beginning. With Eve, and it's still happening today. All he did was keep talking until she doubted what God said. She doubted. Because, see, he do wordplay. He put the word in there, but he do wordplay. He switched it up. Now she was unsure. This is the same thing he's doing today. He's doing wordplay and he's switching up the word and now you're unsure. This is why you got to study to show yourself approved. Oh, come on. He said, search the scriptures. Come well, on. in them you believe you have eternal life. Search them. That don't mean read it and come up with what you think. You got to search them. Go find the one that line up with it. 
Go find the one, the, the scripture that lined up with that one and let the word confirm itself. Whatever came across that pulpit, whatever come across this zoom, line it up next to the word. Let the Holy Spirit lead and guide you, not what somebody else said, not mm -hmm. the knowledge of man. You've got to allow the Holy Spirit to lead and guide you because he does. Oh, hallelujah. What happened was the first of many times that Israel fell into immorality and idolatry. And it also serves as a warning to us. Mm -hmm. The Corinthians would have been particularly susceptible to this kind of temptation as the city of Corinth was filled with idolatry and sexual immorality. Ain't that what the world filled with today? Mm -hmm. Come on, these people got their own laws and rules and you better not say nothing against them. It's filled with it. Mm -hmm. So let's check ourselves. Hold up that mirror on tonight. I told you, get your pen and your paper out. This is for correction. You want to make a hundred? Okay, let's correct what you got wrong. Come on. <laughs> Come on. This, this, is the, this is the dressing room. This is the practice test. He said, okay, y'all been working. Let me show you where you at. Okay, you missed this one. You missed this. You got this right, but you missed this one. Mm -hmm. Find yourself in the word and correct it. First Corinthians 10. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant. How that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea and did all eat the same spiritual meat. We are all under the same God, the one and true living God. We are all supposed to be following Christ, Jesus, the son of the living God. And did all drink the same spiritual drink for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them and that rock was Christ. But with many of them, come on, God was not well pleased. Ooh, with many is many of us today, God is not well pleased. My God, I remember being in a service, y'all, and the spirit of the Lord just overtook me, and I just began to cry, and I I didn't know why so much so, so I went in the bathroom because I didn't know what was going on, and when I came out, I was still crying. And the, the word of the Lord began to come out of my mouth. And all it was is, I am not pleased. I mm. am not pleased. I am oh, not no. pleased. That's all I can say. I am not pleased. My mm. God. He is mm. not pleased. For they were overthrown in the wilderness. Judgment has come to the house of God. And you about to be overthrown. Uh, Sister Freedy, if you don't mind, I'm going to share it. She was in prayer, in a prayer service, and she heard the voice of the Lord tell her, I'm about to destroy the house. Mm. She got up off her knees because she didn't know if the roof was about to cave in <laughs> and she lived off the building. Come Amen. She said, I didn't know if he was naturally destroyed. I didn't know what all I know is the Lord said, I'm about to destroy the house. And I jumped up and got my stuff and I ran up out of there. Come on. You've got to listen to the voice of God and he is speaking on today. He's right. about to flip over some tables. Mm. And I'm with him. I'm right behind him. I'm ready. <laughs> Ooh, come on. We bashers tonight. It's, it's, it's bashers tonight. You got to tear this stuff down so it can be rebuilt. You didn't mm -hmm. do it right. Come on. That ain't going to work. You didn't do it right. When you tell your kids growing up to do something, Go fix your bed. You're going to, ah, oh, that ain't right. You need to do it right. And you keep doing it till what? They get it right. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I don't mind keep coming and giving you the same thing over and over. Christ, I'm coming because I want you to get it right. It's not my will that any should perish. That is what the word is for on tonight. Now, these things were our examples. Mm -hmm. He said he wasn't pleased. But with many of them, God was not well pleased for they were overthrown in the wilderness. He's telling you what happened. They died. Now mm. these things were our examples to, mm. in, to the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Neither be ye idolaters as were some of them. And as, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. 
Y'all so carnal in the house of God, it don't make no sense. Oh, keep, oh Lord, hallelujah. Y'all, I'm gonna try to stick. Go, go it on, go it on. Ooh, we so carnal in the house yeah. of God. Holy Ghost. We yeah. talk more about the things that's going on in the world than the things we see in the house that we need to correct. I'm just going to say it. We're more worried about a football game than the soul of our brothers and sisters. Come on. We share more about the things that's happening out there Ooh. than we do the word of God. Holy Spirit. Oh, come on, you carnal. Don't get upset. Receive it. Let it cut you, and then it's going to turn around and heal you. Stop dodging the sword. Just take it. Ooh, hallelujah. Never, neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed. Don't start chasing after other gods. Don't start chasing after other things. We have to keep our mind on kingdom. Mm -hmm. We got to mm -hmm. keep our mind on the assignment. Christ is our example. When he came, you tell me what you heard him talk about. What kingdom. did he teach? What Kingdom. was he preaching? What Kingdom. was his conversation? Kingdom. Oh, come on. If he's our example, if he's the one we follow in. Oh, y'all, come on. It's Christ. It's him we following. So you want your life to be an example of his life to somebody else. Mm -hmm. So you're not, you're not carnal. I'm not giving you no off the wall advice. I'm not coming up with something I heard. I'm going to tell you what the words say. Come on. And even we can also share with people. That ain't what you want to do. Because see, I did that. I, I know how that work out. That, that, that don't work out well. So you don't want to do that. Well, and let me on. show you why. Because see, I wasn't following the scripture right here. They said not to do this. You understand? Maybe I didn't know. But I know now. And now that I know, I can share it with somebody else. Mm hmm Right? Come on. Stop being so corner-minded. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day. Three and twenty thousand. Ooh, y'all gonna be in shock. Y'all gonna be in shock with the things that God is about to do in My this God. hour. My God. You're gonna be, you're, you're gonna be at a loss for words. But you know who won't be? Those that know the word of God. Mm -hmm. Those mm -hmm. that believe the scripture. Those that believe that he is who he say he is and he stand for what he stand for. You won't be, you won't be caught off guard. The basic temptations have not changed. Satan still uses the same tactics. Sexual temptation is yet today. And the idols of money, pleasure, fame, the good life, it ain't changed. It's the same mm -hmm. thing. He's showing you the same things instead of taking you up on the high mountain. He's taking you to Hollywood on the mountain. Ooh, I'm going to give you all this. Come on. I don't think you ever thought about it. The sign that say Hollywood is where? On top of the mountain. I'm going to give you all this. And this is the same thing he's doing today. Satan is still offering the people. The people of God are taking the bait. They're taking the bait for the stage. They're taking the bait for the platform. They're taking the bait for the money. That's what your honorarium is. It's the bait of Satan. That's your honorarium. That, that, that money that you can't preach till that invoice pay. Because see, they send you an invoice now. And this is what they require within this number of miles. If, if it's within the city, it's this amount. If, if it's out of the city, it's this amount. Baby, your honorarium is of Satan. That's one of his devices because the gospel is not for sale. You can't preach until the invoice paid. You are a prophet for hire. That's what you are. Stop following false teachings. That's only causing the church to compromise. We are accepting anything, and that is the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. The people of compromise, they weaken a reputation or a principle by accepting standards that are lower than desirable. God say, I am not pleased. 
I am not pleased. It brings into a danger by discreet foolishness. It's a lot of foolishness going on in the house of God. I mean, we got band leaders and, and drumettes going across the stage and, and a flag team. It's a bunch of foolishness Come on. going on in the house of God. We got dancers and people turning flips. I saw a conference. They had a woman inside a, a ring look like they have at the circus and the people being there in the church. What is, I'm talking foolishness in the house of God. It's reckless behavior. Mm -hmm. And it causes you to become vulnerable and you function less effectively. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. And this is what has happened in the house of God. The Lord calls on the community to repent. He's calling the church to repent. He's calling the shepherds to repent or risk the judgment from the sword of his mouth. Those who repent will be given the hidden manna that is in the grain of heaven and a white stone or a clean slate with a new identity. Become new in Christ. Mm -hmm. You think because you've been saved 40 years, you in Christ, but you're not. You've been fell to the wayside. My God. Baby, you dirty. We got to get up and clean this mess up. Like the uh, the people in Pergamum, it's easy to normalize the non-Christian-like behavior. Mm -hmm. Because he's still working on me. It's what they say all around you. He's still working on me. And we allow that behavior to dilute our values. Well, I don't want to judge nobody. You better stand on the word of God. You better start mm. judging these trees by the fruit is bearing. Come on. That's what the word said. I'm not judging you. The word judging you. I'm doing what the word said do. Your fruit ain't lining up, sis. I'm sorry. And I'm saying it in love. Brother, That that's not of Christ. I'm saying it in love so that we can correct it. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Amen. Oh, come on. We have become so loose. In our lifestyle, we say anything, we post anything, and live like Mike Todd said on we on the line of doing everything short of sin. How you say that in the poor bits of the congregation? We're gonna do everything in here. Come on. Oh, and everybody love them. Why? Because they love darkness. Why? Because they are mm -hmm. not children of light. Why? Because they've never known Christ. Mm -hmm. They're calling his name, but they don't know him. One day, you're okay with it. You ain't saying nothing against it. You, you ain't saying you for it, but you, you ain't saying nothing, so that speak too. Mm -hmm. You ain't saying nothing. The next day, you doing it. One day, you don't say nothing. Next day, you okay with it. The next day, you doing it. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. You are assembling, but in which church? Anybody want to share? You got yeah. it. In, you got, uh, let, me, let me say this. What, no, what, 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 yeah, when you was talking, uh, what kept coming to me was over in the book of John, uh, uh, when he had the dialogue with the woman at the well, and uh, it was said John four and twenty. He says, when he, the woman was talking, she said, "Our fathers worship in the mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is a place where men ought to worship." Verse twenty one. Jesus said unto her, "Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when we shall neither in this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not. We." Then he says, we know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. But then this 23rd verse, but the hour coming, now is when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in the spirit and in truth. For he seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And when you're talking about uh, church and worship, many people don't know what they're worshiping is what a lot of the problem is. You know, Jesus was saying that you know not what you worship. So many thinking they're going to assemblies and many are giving reverence. And I've, I heard it said out throughout the night, are really giving honor to to the building, to the buildings and not the and not 
the Lord himself. And so this is part of a uh, deception that's happening that has been taking place. How be it God will it not in buildings made with hands. So what we see in a lot of these places is when you're talking about the dancing and the rings and all that, you know not what you worship. So uh -huh. this is why everything is going on in these places. I don't know what they worship. They seen somebody else do it. So it catches on, monkey see, monkey do. And so this <laughs> becomes the norm. This becomes, yeah. And so now everybody have praise, dance, the team, whatever, and all this stuff, the mimes and all this, because this is what they seen done. And so what does that do for the next generation? Because the Bible say one generation died and another one come about. So we don't know how, how do you worship the Lord? Come on. But the time, but Jesus said the time has come when the true worshipers and they that worship God must worship him in spirit, not mm -hmm. through my flesh, but by my spirit and in truth. Yes. Amen. I bless you. Yeah. Amen. That's good. Uh, number four. Y'all let me know if y'all want to cut this in half, but uh, I'm I'm ready. All right, then. The church of Thyatira, the church that follows false prophets, prophets for hire. Some of y'all might as well put it on your flyer. You can hire me. Because that's what you are. You are a prophet for hire. Uh, verse 18 says, And unto the angel of the church in Thyatira, right? These things said the Son of God who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. This is Jesus the Christ Lord who brings wrath. I know thy works and thy charity and service and faith and thy patience and thy works. And the last to be more than the first. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel. Ooh, come on, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants, to commit fornication, and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds, and I will kill her children with death. So they don't want to talk about that, that Jesus. You don't hear about that one. I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins and the hearts. And I will give unto every one of you according to your works. But unto you I say, and unto the rest in Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine, so it's some people in this church that ain't following it. It's there and they see it, but they are not following it, which have not known the depths of Satan. And they speak, I will put upon you none of the burden. Jesus led us to the church of Thyatira praises it for growing in faith and service. The church's downfall was in dev its devotion to a false prophet that led some members to commit idolatry and immorality. Jezebel worshipped the pagan god Baal, and she corrupted her husband, the king, and thereby all Israel to do the same. It's people sitting in these churches corrupting everybody that's in them because they are under the spirit of Jezebel. She killed the true prophets of God. She had her own lying prophets. You say, well, ain't nobody in the church killing. Yes, they are. When they come and they go against what the true prophet that God sent said. That that's them killing the true prophet in the house so that you can hear the false prophet. This is what this spirit does in the body of Christ. She had her own lying prophet. She used a position of power to influence others to follow her wickedness. She ain't living right. She ain't doing right. It's a spirit. When I say that, it's not a, the, uh, an actual person. This spirit is on people. It's operating through people and they're wicked. They lie. There are, it's a lying prophet, a lying spirit. They go around lying on people. They go around uh, trying to get everybody to be against other people. They need the spotlight. They need the attention. It's always about them. Oh, hallelujah. My God. Mm, it's a spirit of confusion. Oh, hallelujah. And that spirit is in the church today using positions and influences to turn people from Jesus 
the Christ, the son of the living God, to follow another Jesus. And the people of God are following these false prophecies and ignoring the sin instruction of God from his true prophets because it's, it, 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 it does not allow them to run the show, to do it their way. The only choice we have is to repent and turn back to Christ. Although the, the false prophet remained unrepentant, Jesus tells the church, you can still repent. By turning away from the pro the ways of the prophet. You can still be saved. But you got to turn. The Lord reminds us in, in this revelation that he will repay each of us according to our deeds. Because he tries the reins of the heart. He know what's in them. Mm -hmm. He know why you're doing what you do. He know why you said it. He know if you took that money and came in here with these proper lies. He know. The payment for sin is death. However, those who persevere in faith will receive a share of Christ's authority over all nations and triumph over death. But you've got to endure till the end. Mm -hmm. Just as some of the churches of Thyatira were led astray by false prophets. And y'all, he said it. I heard a minister say, I don't believe there are many false prophets mm. that have gone out into the world. I know it's hard to receive, but that is antichrist. That's right. That's well, right. why do you say that? Because it is the total opposite. Somebody get that what scripture Jesus said. Uh, for me. Get that for me, uh, Pastor Moore, so we can read it from the word of God. Where, where you, where you, where where you he coming from? Where he says uh, there are many false prophets who have gone out. Okay. I heard a minister say, I don't believe it. I don't believe there are many false prophets that have gone out into the world. I believe there are a lot of people that just don't know. Everybody said amen. Amen, that's right. No, that is antichrist. That seemed harsh and hard, but we got to call it what it is. Because you got to nip that in the bud. That is the total opposite of what Christ said. He said many have gone out. He said be aware of the false prophets. You got that, Bishop? He said many have gone out. And to beware of the false prophets. It's Matthew 7 and 15. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep clothing. That's the one you're looking for. That one will work too. Um, beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep clothing, but inwardly are ravening wolves. And then you got Colossians 2 and 8. Uh, Matthew 24 and 11. And many false prophets will arise and mislead many. Many will come and cause people to believe false things. Matthew 24 and 11 said many false prophets will arise. So when you say you don't believe that many false prophets have gone out, you saying Jesus is a liar. Oh, come on. Antichrist means not Christ. Mm-hmm. Not with Christ, not for Christ, not what Christ said. So when you say many have not, I don't, when, oh my God, when you say I don't believe, ooh, you don't believe. That's right. Did you get that? I need you to hear that. When you say you don't believe what Christ said, you are not a believer. That's right. Right. You have become an unbeliever, my God. Your soul is at stake and you can't see and you can't hear. Oh, hallelujah. You that's antichrist. That's antichrist. Oh, hallelujah. If we say the opposite of what Christ said, y'all, that's anti. That's right. That's right. That's antichrist. Uh, I don't believe. But what did Christ say? You are calling Christ a liar. That's right. I need you to receive that. We got to go in the word, y'all. This is why you got to study to show yourself approved so you're not just out there saying anything. 
You got to know the word of God. Who just as some in the church of Thyatira were led astray by false prophets, people today fall prey to this same thing. Now you, you under a cult. Y'all can't fellowship with nobody. If, if they lead a church, you can't fellowship with them. That's a cult. That's not a church. That's not the body of Christ. That is not a Christ. Come on with it. That is a cult. You're no longer just following what Christ said, but you got all these practices of the church. This is what our church believe in. Is that what Christ said? These are cult practices. Mm -hmm. You got to follow this because this is our doctrine. I only want the doctrine of Christ. There's one doctrine. There's one God. Oh, there's one Lord and one Spirit. There's one doctrine, the doctrine of Jesus Christ. That's it. All these other false teachings, Um, you can follow nature. This man just died talking about you know, becoming one, I, I don't even I don't even know what he had going on, but he had a millions of followers and people that believed this mess. This man said he don't believe Christ gonna come back on a on a horse. And I don't think he's gonna overtake Satan. Carlton Pearson, this is what he said out of his own mouth. I don't believe he's gonna kill Satan with a sword. He's mm. gonna have to come with more than that. My God. Come on. At one time, he might have had it right, Ooh, but he didn't have it right laying on his deathbed. These, these were still his words. Mm. He said Jesus might come in a Maserati or a Jaguar or something. What? Mm. Y'all, come on and make this make sense. We just following anybody. Come on with it. We just following anything. You've got to get in this word for yourself. Some of this stuff is just foolishness. And I don't understand how you're following it. That's how lost people are. It don't even make sense. Yet you still following it. You, you want to be so deep in the word. Everything you said is nonsense. And the people you talking to realize it and you don't. Do you know how lost you got to be for a lost person to tell you you don't make no sense? <laughs> come oh, on. Come on. Ooh, to share in Christ's victory, we must avoid these so-called deep secrets of Satan and hold firm to Christ's teaching. Some of y'all, man, listen, just so deep. The word all out of context. The people we talking to already confused, but they got enough sense to know what you're saying ain't making no sense. Mm -hmm. They got enough sense to say, well, I'm going to need you to show me that in the word because that I, I'm not getting that one. Come on, but you can't see it. You have been seduced by that woman, Jezebel. Mm -hmm. You were simple, but in which church? Mm -hmm. Number five, the church of Sardis. The church that is spiritually dead. Oh, hallelujah. And unto the angel of the church in Sardis write these things, said he that had the seven spirits of God and the seven stars, I know thy works. That thou have a name, that thou livest, and are dead. So many of these shepherds are dead. So many of these buildings are dead. They packed out, but it's packed with dead people. Come on with it. Oh, come on. It's a word going first, forth. It's the word going forth, but from a dead man. Oh, God, mercy. And see, Christ ain't dead. He mm -hmm. went in the ground, but he rose. He's alive. But the word you're receiving is coming from someone who has a name that they live, but they are dead. You you going off who they used to be, because they probably mm -hmm. did throw it out on that, that straight and narrow path. But somewhere along the way, they veered off, and you keep showing off, off who they used to be, but they are I'm no up. longer alive. They are dead. You keep showing up to that ministry on what it used to be, but it's no longer that. It is dead. If oh Christ God. is not the head, it is dead. Mm -hmm. Come on. If Christ is not the head, it is dead. The Bible said we was born into sin. 
We was born to die unless Christ is the head. Because the wages of sin is death. The only way that is not your story is if Christ is the head. That's it. You have a name that you live, but thou art dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard and hold fast. And remember therefore thou shalt not watch. I will come on thee as a thief and thou shalt not know what hour. I will come unto thee, my God. Thou has a, has a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments. And they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He that come overcometh and the same shall be clothed in white raiment and will not, I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. But I will confess his name before my father and before the angels, his angels. He that have an ear, let him hear what the spirit said unto the church. I'm sitting here and it, it comes to me this uh, dream that the Lord had given me and I'm going to get right to the point. It was a, a piece of land and I saw a brand new house built on this piece of land and it was a fire. I could see a fire and I, I was running to tell the people that it was a fire. And when I got there, the light was on. It was a brand new house and the light was on and the house next to it was an old house. But I could see the smoke coming from the old house. And when I asked the Lord what it meant, I was running and trying to warn people that deception was coming and to be aware and not to be fooled. And when I began to step to that house that had the light on, the Lord let me know that old house had the fire. See, that one they talk about, that's the hole in the wall. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that one had mm -hmm. the fire in it. But when that new house came, everybody fell asleep. Mm -hmm. The light was on. It had a name that it lived. It looked like somebody was living there, but they were asleep. They were mm -hmm. dead. Mm. My God, hear the word oh, yeah. on tonight. If you have an ear to hear, hear what the spirit is saying to the church. Take the correction in love. Take it in love. Our Lord fought the church of Sardis for maintaining an outward appearance of being alive while actually being spiritually dead. Mm -hmm. They look like they're on fire for God. They jumping and running and all over the church and falling out and, you know, on their post. But guess what? They don't pick up a Bible during the week. They don't pray unless it's at church in front of people. They don't speak about the Lord in their private time or with other people outside of God because they too busy talking about the people of God. Come on, you have a name that you live, but you are dead. You are no longer doing the things of God. You are no longer following the ways of Christ. You have left the faith. They mm -hmm. dress the part. They hold the position. You still in position. We have said it before. God is the only person I know that will can let you continue to do the work and you've been fired. Mm -hmm. You have died. But you are yet up speaking and preaching and teaching and and leading choir and, and playing the drums and on the organ. You're still doing all these things, but you are dead. Dressed in the part, holding the positions, but their heart is far from him. Matthew 15 and 8, this people draw nigh unto me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their hearts is far from me. My God. They talk it, but they don't walk it. Ooh, Jesus warns the church to wake up and repent, lest, ye come, lest he come like a thief to bestow his judgment. Oh, my God, I'm hearing you've got to follow Christ. You in the scripture, you read the word, but you're not acknowledging Christ. And we can't come to God without him. You've been doing it a long time and you're going to miss out because you're leaving out Christ. Mm -hmm. That's your ticket. He is our way in. My God. Those in the church of Sardis who heed Christ's warnings, heed the warning tonight, will be dressed in white, a symbol of purity and victory, and will be acknowledged in heaven's book of life. Christians can fall into the trap that is snared. The church in Sardis, if we merely go through the motions, y'all, that's what you're doing. 
That's why COVID came to shake it up, to wake some people up. So you can't wake up a person that's sleepwalking. You understand? The Lord told me the church is sleepwalking. They were not just asleep. Oh, come on. They weren't just asleep. They were sleepwalking. What a sleepwalker does is everything they are normally doing. Uh -huh. They do the things they're used to doing. They do the things they know to do. And this is what is happening in the church. They are sleepwalking. You're going uh -huh. through the motions, but Christ is not in it. I got you no longer have a heart for the people. You just know how to do church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're going through the motions of practicing our faith without feeding our spirit. We know how to get up and give a word, but you ain't prayed. You ain't sought the Lord. The Holy Spirit didn't give it to you. You just heard the message so many times. You know what to get up there and say. My God. Oh, come on. Y'all. Oh, hallelujah. Lord, help us. We can avoid becoming the living dead, y'all. This is who it is. The living dead. You got the sleepwalkers. You got the living dead. You got the Nicolaitans. We got a whole lot going on. We got hmm. to clean up the house. You, you don't, you don't. This is why people confuse. And you know what the sinners say. At least I know what sin is. <laughs> I know what it means to be out here. They don't. They can't come in and learn Christ because it's too much going on. Mm, mm, mm. It's too much going on. My God. Oh, hallelujah! I'm. I, I want to share this. My God. It was a, a prayer service I was hearing about where you got people in prayer. Then somebody came in and turned the TVs on. So now you got the TVs on and it's playing music. Then they have somebody on the organ playing a song. And then a person walking around the church praying and speaking and casting. Y'all, that's confusion. Mm. is not in that. He's not there. This is the spirit of Jezebel. I got to be seen. I got to be out front. It got to be about me. You you being led by a spirit, but it's not the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Come on. You got to see it for what it is. You got to speak up. If you ain't going to speak up, you need to find somewhere else to go. You got to come from under that. That's confusion. And, and we know that God is what? Not the author of confusion. So what they tell you is not of God. You are assembling, but in which church? You got to feed the Holy Spirit. You got to feed the spirit, man. We can avoid becoming like this, y'all. We got to study. We got to pray. We got to fast. We got to fellowship with like-minded people. We have to stay in the presence of God. We got to stay in the commandments of Christ. Mm -hmm. You assemble, but in which church? The church of Philadelphia, the church that patiently endured despite weaknesses. Like the church of Smyrna, they endured. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write these things, said he that is holy. He that is true, he that hath the key of David. He that openeth and no man shut it, and shut it and no man open. I know thy works, behold, how I said before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength and hast kept thy word and has not denied my name. I love how Christ starts these letters with who he is. And then he does who he is. Mm -hmm. His response is his action. And his action is him. Oh, hallelujah. He said from the one. That openeth and no man shutteth and shutteth and no man openeth. He said, now nah, I open the door before you that no man can shut. Because you got a little strength left, my God. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews that are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee because thou hast kept the word of my patience. I will keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take it thy crown. Philadelphia was in a place of hostility toward the people of God. And he praised them for remaining faithful 
in, in the face of trials and, and despite their limited strength, they remain faithful. Jesus does not reproach the church of Philadelphia, but he condemns the persecutors. He promised the Philadelphians would remain faithful to him. He will protect them in the hour of trial and make them pillars in God's heavenly temple. It shows us the blessings that come when we maintain our faith. Despite life's tribulations, despite being persecuted and talked about. In fact, those who persevered despite their weaknesses will stand strong as pillars in heaven. Mm. Stand strong. Keep the faith. Psalms 23, 5 and 6 says, Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. He said, I'm about to open a door for you that no man can shut. In the presence of mine enemies, thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You assemble, but in which church? Seven, the church of Laodicea. Now, this is many churches right here. This is many churches today. The lukewarm faith. They was lukewarm. And unto the angel of the church of Laodiceans, write these things said. The amen, the faithful, true witness, the beginning of creation of God. I know oh. thou that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou were cold or hot. You're not agreeing with it, but you're not going against it either. Come on. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods, and I have need of nothing. I mm. saw a, a YouTube video this morning of Creflo Dollars Church some people had went to, and they had about 20 men with 30 buckets piled high for the offering. Oh, come on, y'all. I'm rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, and know it's not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. He said, I don't want you to be blinded. Mm -hmm. I want you to be able to see. Try me. Buy of me gold tried in the fire that they mayest be rich and you get this white raiment that thou mayest be clothed and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. Come to me and mm -hmm. anoint thine eyes with eyes that thou mayest see. My God. He right. said, I want you to be able to see where you're at. This word is coming forth on tonight for you to be able to see this is the eyes help. You got to apply it. Mm -hmm. Apply the word of God to your life. Lord, shine your light on me and show me where I'm at. Show me my faults. Show me my shortcomings. That I may repent. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knocking of any man. Hear my voice and open the door. I will come into him and I will sup with him. This is that mercy and that grace. Mm hmm and he with me to him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame. And I am set down with the father in his throne. He said, I'm going to do the same for you. If you overcome, mm -hmm. get a word on tonight. Jesus didn't say nothing good about the church of Laodicea. My God. Now the other churches had a few good things. I got one thought against you. I got one thing against you. But this church, y'all ain't doing nothing right. <laughs> Come on. This is many churches today. Y'all ain't on. doing nothing right. You're not even trying because you are blinded. Because deception came and you didn't receive the word of the Lord. He said deception is in the world now. My God, nobody heeded to the word of God. And now you're all deceived. You're blinded. You My can't God. see, you can't hear. Oh, but his word is coming forth on tonight. I heard Bishop say the other day, and it registered with me. 
because I'm always saying why they can't hear, why they can't see. He said, my sheep know my voice. And another they will not follow. So on tonight, I know that some of you are his sheep. And I ask that you put your ear, that you may hear the shepherd, the true shepherd. Come on. Jesus the Christ, the son of the living God. Ooh, it gave, what gave me hope in this? Jesus said, I will not lose not a one My God. that the father has given me. So I know that there are some who have went astray. But if you have been chosen, if you have been given to Christ, he's not going to lose you. I don't know what it's going to take to get you lined back up, but I'm praying for you. I'm standing in the gap and making up the hedge. My God, we've got to stand up and be a covering for some of these people. Christ said, I'm sitting on the right hand of the Father. I'm making intercession. He's the mediator. Mm. Ooh, and that same Christ is on the inside of us. So guess what we do? We intercede on behalf mm -hmm. of others. Mm -hmm. We're saying the same thing Christ said. Lord, give them a little more time. They're going to get it right. They're going to line up. And I believe the word of God. Christ isn't going to lose not one that the Father has given him. Whatever it takes to get people back on the straight and narrow and to keep us there is going to happen. My God. Mm. Ooh, my God. Just do what he said. I've learned that, y'all. Just do what he said. Jonah learned the hard way. Don't be a Jonah. Jonah said, I ain't doing it. He got swallowed up. I believe he died. I, I don't, you know, he got swallowed up in his well and he got spit out. I ain't trying to die. <laughs> You know, I'm dying spiritually to yourself so you can live. That's right. That's right. Die spiritually to yourself so you can live and go do the work of the Lord. Just be obedient to the commandments of Christ. Follow the Holy Spirit. He said he's, it's coming. The comfort is coming and he's going to lead you to all truth. If you feel like you can't trust nobody, I don't know. These churches, ain't nobody right. Guess what? Repent. Accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Now you have someone to lead and guide you to all truth. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit do it all by itself. You've got to believe that and be led by the Spirit. God, I mean, Jesus didn't have nothing good to say about this church. He ain't mm. got nothing good to say about these today. He said, I'm not pleased. Mm. They say, Lord, what you got? You had all these things you said about these other churches. What you got for me? He came up empty. I ain't got nothing. I ain't got nothing good to say. What they said, mm. you ain't got nothing good to say. Don't say nothing at all. Jesus said, I have nothing good to say about the church of Laodicea. The Laodicean church has nothing to commend it. Jesus begins the message with condemnation, with, with judgment. Not condemnation, with judgment. I know you mm -hmm. did. You need to call nor hide. I wish you were. I wish you was one or the other. So because you are lukewarm, you need to hide or call. I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. Mm. Y'all about to be spit out. Some of you already have. My God. But you got a name that you live, so you still functioning. But you've mm -hmm. already been spit out. My God. My God. He said, I wish that you were called or hide. But I'm, I'm spitting you out of my mouth. You say I'm rich. I have a, acquired wealth and do not need anything. I don't need nothing. But you do not realize that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. He emphasizes they're lukewarm. He says that I need you to know that you ain't on neither, you ain't on neither side. Mm -hmm. I don't want nothing to do with you. The indecisiveness. You can't make I'm up gone. your mind. Mm. You done came to spiritual blindness. Confusion causes blindness. You can't see. I'm, you, you confused because you can't see. You can't see because you're confused. You claim to be rich, blessed, and self-sufficient. They might have been materially rich. They might have <laughs> had things in line materially, but spiritually, they were wretched, pitiful, and in a bad way. Ooh, 
hallelujah. And the worst part about it is they didn't even know. They could not see their need for Christ. Reminds me of a message. God's son who had no sins. This was a good message, y'all. It really blessed me. God's son who had no sins could not hear the voice of the Lord or see his hand. Couldn't see his hand on your life because you caught up in your own desires. My the God. to see and say, I got it together. I got my money, got my good job, got my house. You know what I'm saying? My bank account bad, like we good. But you are spiritually broke. Mm -hmm. You are spiritually empty. This was a church filled with self-deceived people. My God. They were self-deceived. Jesus calls the Laodicean church to repent of its sins. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire so you can become rich My in God. the spirit. My God, so you can cover your shame for nakedness. Their material wealth had no eternal benefit. You, This ain't going to benefit you where we're going. What we're going yeah. is e for eternity. This stuff passed away. Sister Janita said, moth and, and rust do it corrupt. This stuff going to pass away don't mean nothing. Only Christ can supply an everlasting inheritance. It's in mm -hmm. him. He's the one who clothes us in righteousness and heal our spiritual blindness. Be healed on tonight. Those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline. So repent. Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and he with me. His rebuke is not of hate, but of love. This mm -hmm. word is not of hate, but of love. Mm -hmm. The Lord disciplines those he loves. The desire response to God's reproof was zealous change and true repentance. Come on, he say, make a change and repent. He stood at the door and knocked. Why? Because he's been locked out. He's no longer in the building. He's no longer in the church. He's standing at the door knocking. Y'all don't lock me out of my church. Have you ever been came home and you was locked out your house? Oh, come on. I came home. My kids done locked the door and I'm locked out. I was upset. This is my house. I'm locked out of my house. We're mm. locking Christ out and the church belongs to him. It's your program. If Christ is locked out, and so many churches today, it's your program. It's just that. It's yours. Mm -hmm. If Christ's not in it, it's your program. If Christ say, I stand at the door and knock, he's not in it. It's your mm -hmm. conference. Mm -hmm. It's your conference with your prophet for hire. If you pay them to come and give you a word, that's Christ's prophet. Satan got ministers too. Come on, that's right. That's right. That's right. That's the word of God. I can say that. Satan has ministers too. And those that you are paying are ministers of Satan. Oh, come on. You don't want to hear that, but it's the truth anyhow. If you pay them, it's your conference and it's your profit for hire. My God, you tell me, did you tell me this? Did you give a love offering or did they give you a price and you had to pay it? Hmm. Oh, come on now. That tells you whose program or conference you're running. It's that simple. Oh, yeah, I could come, I could come preach it, or I, I could come speak if you need me to. Um, well, what what's your charge? What's your what's your honorarium? Oh no, there's no charge. I'm not charging anything. Okay, well, we want to give you something, whatever y'all give. If you give something or not, that's up to y'all, but there's no charge. Or did they say, okay, I'm going to send you over my contract and, mm. and your deposit that have to be paid before I come and you pay the other half after the service? Come on. Come on. That tells you who conference it is. Mm -hmm. That tells you who the prophet is sent by. Hallelujah. You ain't got to say nothing. That tells you <laughs> who it is. Christ ain't in it. Y'all, I say this in love. Just receive the word on tonight and repent. 
That's it. It's that simple. Ooh, put your pride to the side and say, Lord, you found me. Because see, I put my pride to the side. Lord, you found me. I heard Bishop say earlier about we shouldn't lose that zeal that we had when we first came to Christ. And I was cut because I just had a conversation the other day telling the sister, I've just been feeling like this all my life going to be. I mean, not in a bad way, but like this it. I'm just going to be studying and preaching the word. And, you know, but it was like he said, like it was just flat. Like this what it's going to be. And I begin to say, we got to keep that joy. Mm -hmm. We got to keep that, that area of joy that you had. Mm -hmm. He said, don't let it become normal. Oh, you got to keep that zeal for God. My God. And I, I felt that. Oh, hallelujah. You know that your life is good. Just because you ain't going out on trips, just because you ain't traveling the world, just because you ain't going to every conference that pop up, don't mean you ain't living for Christ and that you're not living. That's right. And we get we get heavy sometimes because it feels like we ain't doing what everybody else doing. That's mm -hmm. a good thing. You don't want to be doing it if everybody else doing it. Because we are set apart. My God, hallelujah. We about to wrap this up, y'all. So, just receive the word. If God told you to give it, he makes provisions for it. I tell people all the time, you're having a conference, it costs how much? $35, I won't be there. I can study the word for myself for free. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Not doing it. Um, Why? Because if God told you to give it, he makes provisions for it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You do not have to charge his people. That's not, a, I'm, I'm telling it like it is. That is not of Christ. I never read in the word where Jesus charged the people for a word. Mm -hmm. I never read that. When he taught, when he preached, when they gave the gospel, I never heard where the people had to pay for it. That did not happen. And you want to know another thing he never charged for? He never charged the people to feed them. He fed all 5,000 plus that showed up for free. Because see, what people turn around and tell you is, well, we got, you know, because we got to order the food. We got to pay for all this. Jesus didn't charge nobody when he fed them 5,000 people. It didn't cost them a dime. They ate for free. So stop trying to say we're charging for this, that, and the other. Because you're not. If the Lord told you to give it, he's going to make provisions. Take it and let the cards lay where they lay. He makes provisions for what he tell you to do. Mm -hmm. So if you went out and rented that $10,000 building, that was you. And now you ain't got the money to pay for it. Did the Lord tell you to do that? Because if he mm -hmm. did, 10000 would have came up. That's right. That's right. Come on. We just calling it what it is. He did not tell you to charge his people. Half the time, the people of God are broke because they didn't gave all their tithes and offering to the church already. They can't even come to the conference. Hmm. Oh, come on. It's the truth anyhow. Go ahead. Go ahead. So, don't tell me it's to cover the expenses. Jesus covered his own expenses. He don't need you to do it for him. He don't need you to charge nobody for him. You telling God you don't believe that he can. Now, I got to charge him $50. Why? Because you don't believe that the Lord is able to provide? That's what you're saying? Christ is not in it. Well, when we went, when we went there, we went there. I wasn't trying to go there, but but we did. Um, he not in it. I wasn't trying to go there. I really wasn't. But he he's not in it. He's he's not in it, y'all. We cannot we cannot do it. And the thing is, you're some people were not doing that, but you saw that this other church made money, and mm -hmm. they was able to add to their building fund, and mm -hmm. they was able to do this and that. So you started doing. But guess what you're doing? You're erring from the faith. You're getting away from the commandments of Christ. You're no longer following his example. You're following the example of another church. Mm -hmm. oh, that's how easily it happens. 
Now you are no longer following Christ and you out of his will. When you do that, just line it back up. If you did it, don't do it no more. Lord, forgive me and I repent. And move forward with the word is not for sale. Um, that's just one thing the Lord has not allowed me to keep silent about. He that's that's always on on the front front burner for me. The word is not for sale, and I take that for myself. So when the Lord does decide to use me or send me somewhere, he keeps that on the front burner for me. The word mm -hmm. is not for sale. And it comes mm -hmm. to you first. That's a reminder for me always. The word is not for sale. Right? And if you know how to study, right? You know how to pray. You know how to, Sister Janina sent me a thing to people, charging people to teach them how to pray. The word of God teach you how to pray for free. Oh, come on. So, you know how to pray. You know how to study. You know how to go in the word of God. The veil has been torn. Go to God in his son name for yourself for free. You don't need a word from the prophet for hire. You can go in Jesus name yourself. You can sit in your house and have a conversation with the Holy Spirit that is within you and get an answer to whatever your question is. My God. The church of Laodicea is easy for us to become complacent in our faith during times of abundance. Christ warns us in this revelation that he will spit out the lukewarm disciples. Instead, Jesus urges us to keep seeking the Lord's face. Even after his hand has bestowed riches on our lives, don't forget where it came from. Mm -hmm. Don't get high and, and lift it up and believe that it's you because it's not. When there is no need, we still have to pray. When mm -hmm. all is well in our lives and we, we still need Christ, it's because of him that we have any of what we have. It's because of him that we do any of what we do. Zechariah 7 and 11, but they refuse. I need y'all to hear it. Oh, my God, because I can be honest with you. I had never read this, so I know it is the Lord. And I want you to hear the word of the Lord. That's Zechariah 7, and we're going to start at the 11th verse. But they refused to hearken and pulled away the shoulder and stopped their ears that they should it. not hear. Mm. They, they made their hearts as an adamant stone. They hardened them because they didn't want to receive the word. Don't let that be you on tonight. Lest they should hear the law and the words which the Lord of hosts had sent in his spirit by the former prophets, therefore, came a great wrath from the Lord of hosts. Therefore, it is come to pass that as he cried and they would not hear, so they cried and I would not hear, said the Lord of hosts. My so God. you can hear him on tonight and he will hear you or you can harden your heart. While he's crying out for you to repent and he's going to close his ears and not hear you. Take heed to the word on tonight. That is, we assemble, but in which church? And that concludes Friday night's live. Bishop, you got something that anybody want to share before we close our list? And we went long tonight, but no, I really not. didn't want to put this in two parts. Because I wanted everybody to be able to hear every church in one sitting and decide where you at. Decide what you need to do and where you need to go moving forward in your lifestyle of living like Christ. It's important. It's very beautiful. Uh, you, you, the word was on you tonight. That's why I had to I had to back up and let me be quiet. I, she got that word for the night, so I had to be quiet. But uh, Christ is sending... He's dealing with the church here in Revelation before his coming. You know, many times we we hear people talk about, well, you you fighting the church, you fighting the church, and you and the, you talking about the church. This is you got to understand that he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Christ here in the book of Revelation, he sends the message to the body of Christ. First, 
He's dealing with his church to get rid of all the spots, wrinkles, and blemishes first before he returns. So this is what we see in the book of Revelation. We see it in our day. Was that first Peter 4 and 17? The time has come, the judgment must begin at the house of God. It's not judgment because he wants to, it's because they refuse to hear. Proverbs 29 and 1. He that being often reproved and hardened his neck shall suddenly be destroyed, and that without a remedy. Judgment never comes without a warning. It never comes. God is the grace of God, Titus 2 and 11, the grace of God that bringeth salvation. Hath the period is appearing now. He that hath an ear, he says that to every church, he that hath an ear, let him hear. The word of God don't go out and return void. He, he has spoken tonight through Sister April. He has spoken through this message. It's up to us to hear and take heed. If you don't, then whatever happens, if the watchman blow the horn and you don't take the warning, your blood going to be on your own heed. A beautiful lesson. I really enjoyed everything tonight. Amen. Sister Janine, I see you got your hand up. Um, <laughs> I, I, um, y'all pray for me because I'm just really going through it. Um, the enemy is really fighting me with not giving his word, but I'm gonna do what the Lord told me to do. Um, I'm just gonna give what I have and then. I'll be done. Um, it says, this is the time of recording of every man to him that is the faithful and true witness. All things are being recorded, date, time, and place, and will be played at judgment so that you will be left without an excuse. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you a crown of life. And be not dismayed for those, be not dismayed for those that do not hear you, heareth not me. And those that are not with me or against me, and I will fight with the words of my tongue. I am the truth. Will you go into the marriage supper of the lamb? And I have John 5 and 30. Um, I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is just because I seek not my own will, but the will of the father that has sent me. If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. There is another that bear witness of me. And I know that the witness which he witnessed is of well, of me is true. And that's all I got. Amen. Anybody else want to share before we close out? Amen. I uh, enjoyed everything. It was a very uh, informative and uh, powerful message. Far as it uh, pertains to the state of the church overall, you know, a lot of times, you know, the Lord sent his word, kind of like uh, Bishop was saying, he sent his words, you know, warning. It's a message of warning that comes, you know, and Jesus said, he that had an ear, they had an ear what the spirit is saying to the church. And over in the book of Revelations, uh, a lot of those, uh, what Jesus, when he was sending the seven letters, what I got out of that was indictments to the churches. Indictments is a, is char is a charge. Mm. I'm bringing an indictment against you. I'm getting ready to judge you. That's what indictment is. And so those were indictments. And so in the last one, that church of the sea, I remember talking about that church before. I mean, they just had it all the way wrong. And the Bible says a little leaven leaveth the whole lump. So how did Laodicea get in that state? And so it's, a, it's the little foxes that destroy the vine and start out piece by piece. And so now the whole lesson, everything concluded, where are you worshiping at? What church are you worshiping at? So, I mean, I really enjoyed it. God bless you. And I truly, for this Bible study, I asked myself that, that question. And what church am I assembling at? When you said, look at, look at yourself, it's not that word. It, it, when you study, it's not just for you. It's, it, you study for yourself first, first and not for, for, for you trying to teach somebody else. It first begins with you. So asking yourself and, and searching yourself of what church are you Ooh, and examining yourself. Oh, it's it's not about what everybody else is. It's about examining you. It's your personal walk 
with God that you're examining? What church are you in? Amen. I um, and I mean that, y'all. I'm telling you, the word that I receive, uh, even when I said, "Well, I'm just in this place of like this is it." What the Lord showed me was you're feeling the way you're feeling because you're not in the word for yourself. I had begun to go in the word because I got to teach. So anytime I'm in the word, I'm looking at it as a lesson, you know, as a teaching or as as a preaching. And he said, no, that's the problem. You got to stay in the place that you were in when you go in the word. I'm always looking for what I'm learning or what the Lord want to show me what the Holy Spirit is, is giving me at, to apply to myself, not just to teach. Mm -hmm. And so when I say receive the word, let it cut you and then repent, let it heal you and move forward, begin to apply it. I'm doing that. He showed me that you studying. I mean, you in the word, but you're doing it to teach. You're not doing it to learn and apply it. Mm -hmm. Though I will, I'll be like, oh yeah, I see me in it. Yeah, but but are you seeing it? Like when you started out, you were only in the word for you. Mm -hmm. Everything you did was for you. That was my cutting. And I, I received it and, and feel the difference already. That you, man, listen, we got to eat the whole roll. <laughs> Hear what the spirit is saying to the church on tonight and line yourself up. Line, line up as a body if it's a body. Line up if it's individual and personally you. Line yourself up that you may be ready when the bridegroom come. That's it on tonight. Uh, Pastor Ryan, you want to close us out? Amen. By his Dear Heavenly Father, we'll come before you right now. Lord, saying thank you for this word that we have heard, Father God. Lord, we ask that you cause this word to break up the fallow ground of the hearts of men. Lord, this word of correction, Lord, that we might all be steered back into the right path. And that's through your son, Jesus' name. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I ask that you look on each and every one upon this call, Father God. Meet their each and every need like only you know how, Lord. Bless everybody. Collect, bless us all collectively and individually, Lord, for our individual needs. And Father God, continue to bless, Lord, the teacher, Lord. Pull back into her what she's pulled into us, Father God, in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you for everything you've done and what you're yet going to do until we meet again. Let everybody say amen. Amen. amen.